joining us today, sir. <laughs> we will take the first question from Nesta McGregor with BBC. <coughs> Good afternoon, Darren. How are you doing? Not too bad, mate. Just coping with the heat. I can imagine. Well, listen, I'm in Manchester and we know the north of London, uh, England, the UK, everywhere has got your back this weekend, man. Um, I just wanted to know, we spoke to um, Robert earlier today who says, you know, He's kind of a smiley, happy-go-lucky guy. We know you like to slide in dreams and rile people up. Does that help you more get ready, or is that more about throwing people off their game? Uh, it just depends on the opponent. If it's an opponent like Rob, why not have fun? You know, because uh, he's a very respectful character. <laughs> but there's not animosity there. There's not like I'm not trying to like get in his head, whether I am or I'm not. You know. I, I don't think I am, to be quite honest. I've just been having a joke and a laugh at him. But then there's other times where opponents where, yeah, it, you know, sometimes it, it gets a little bit more heated and words get exchanged and so forth, so on. So I just think it depends on the fight and the person you're fighting. And it's it's hard to, like, uh, sort of smack talk a guy like someone like Whitaker. Mm. It obviously makes it easier to punch someone in the face a lot harder if you kind of hate them. But I, I know exactly what you're saying. Um, no, it doesn't, that's it doesn't. the underdog going into this, but where for you is this fight won? Uh, just through all my training, what I've been doing in the gym, through my strategy there. Uh, I've left my strategy to my coach and we've been doing everything in the gym. So hopefully everything we've been putting into play in the gym is going to work in the fight. So I don't actually know what I'm going to do in the fight. I know it's programmed in, inside of me. Because my coach has been programming it for the past eight weeks. So that's how my coach probably sees me winning the fight off, off him programming everything into me. Okay, uh, just two more very quick questions, and I don't mean to stir, but I don't think you can do a press conference without Conor McGregor's name being mentioned. So let's say at the end of this, you're victorious on Saturday. Um, and White says middleweight championship or Conor McGregor at Anfield. Uh, sold out crowd and, and we can watch again. Which would you prefer? The weight title. Conor McGregor's a lightweight. He's two weights below me. Yeah. W wouldn't happen. You're not willing to drop down. Um, let's, the reason why I mentioned Anfield is because obviously you're a big Liverpool fan. They pick up the title tomorrow. Will you be watching um, and have you got a message for the team? Uh, you know what? No, I won't be watching. I'm here today. I'm here to look after myself and I focus on what I've got to do on Saturday. So, you know, I hope the team do well, but I'm not really interested in what anyone else is doing or any other sport is doing. I'm here to do business on Saturday. I'm, I'm here for myself and myself only and my team and my family. Perfect. Nice and focused. Look, good luck on Saturday, man. Thank you. We'll take the next questions from Julian Kivitz with Independent Media. Um, can you just explain to me, I think uh, I've uh, listened uh, along the grapevine about your reaction to that must be dull fight. How did that change you mentally to that loss and uh, just your turn around emotionally and mentally towards the fight game? What What was that? It just after the must be dull fight, um, how did that impact you in just getting more drive and getting back and just pushing yourself harder? Uh, I didn't. I was I was sad for, for a long time and I had to just sort of build myself back up over a long period of time and uh, uh, just that sort of face some demons and it was, you know, it was quite tough, but it was two fights ago, so, you know, I don't really think about it no more. And then just tell us, um, in terms of the middleweight, are you are you going to be settling at middleweight now? Is this where you feel you're going to be comfortable? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm quite comfortable at the weight. I'm close to the weight, so... Uh, you know, I think it's a good weight. I could probably make Walter weight if it was if it's hard for one last time, you know, it was a big money fight or something like that. But I'm comfortable at middleweight. I feel like I've grown into it now. Thank you so much. All the best for Saturday. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will take the next question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Darren, I think everybody's noticed that you've been very active on social media. Would you say you've been successful in doing what you wanted to do and getting your name in everyone's conversation? Uh, I suppose so, but that wasn't the intention. The intention was just to sort of uh, broadcast, you know, what I think's funny and, and what I think is having a laugh. And 
if people go along with that, which which a lot of the people did, you know, that was good for me. And it seemed to uh, it seemed to really hit off, you know, during the lockdown and and stuff uh, for the months everyone was locked up. I, I you know I just wanted to make sort of the experience for everyone. I know everyone had bigger problems. I just wanted to make my social media just as I always say, real and fun. So, you know, I think everyone enjoyed it and, and it got in a lot of people's mouths, like you said. Um, I'm curious, uh, no Photoshopping your cell phone, Rob, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and I feel like that was an easy one for you to take aim at. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm fighting them, aren't I? So, create a little bit of a, something there. But I, I've, I've pretty much Photoshopped my face on everyone, everyone, every fighter these days. So, uh, becoming quite a trend amongst the fighters and social media <clears throat> with uh, all of the attention you've been getting is a little is it a little more disappointing for you that there's not going to be an audience on saturday uh yeah i suppose there is because you know it's it's good to have the crowd there and i get a little bit more nervous uh, with the crowd because uh, it's like you know as i said it's big stage uh, bright lights and i'm probably going to treat it like a sparring session and i always you know, I'm, I'm very calm, cool, and collected and sparring, and, and that's when I fight my best. So, hopefully, I'll, I'll be bringing my best Saturday. But, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed, but, you know, it is what it is. You just have to crack on with it. You've said that you've tried to talk trash to Rob, but, in your words, it just didn't work. How no. would you describe it? Is it just friendly rivalry? Is it just a competition? How would you describe, I guess, the tension, if any, with Whitaker? It's just business. It's just pure business. I've got no hard feelings towards him i wish him all the best in his life and in his career and his family and you know uh, he, he's I, I can't trash talk a nice guy and, and and i don't see any fakeness inside of him i don't see any you know mr me i don't see him putting any any act on so you know I, I feel like he's a real guy and i feel like he's a friendly guy even though you know he's a beast inside the cage so you know uh Saturday is just business, and then after that, you know, I, I, don't, I won't hold anything towards the guy. You know, I, I wish him all the best, whether he wins or loses. I just, you know, I wish him the best. Final one from me. Jack Hermanson had the big win over Kelvin Gastelum on Saturday. He said he wants the winner of you and Rob. Does that one interest you, or do you think you have your sights set on someone else if you win? If I win, I'm fighting at Israel Adesanya, and that's all it is to it. Thank you. We will take our next question from Joe Coleman with TalkSport. Hi, Darren. Thanks. Um, first thing I've got to ask, what was the head of Liverpool's Premier League title? Oh, it was good. I went down to the... Uh, I went to the ground, and uh, but I couldn't stay long because I had training the next day, so I only stayed till about one in the morning and uh, celebrated with all the fans. And there was a few Liverpool players there, so... You know, it was good. And then the next day, they all went down to the, the Albert Dock, like, which is our sort of peer ed. It was, it was good. It was good. Really good. Amazing. I'm sure you'll get to probably celebrate the weekend. Um, you, your story from kind of the streets of Liverpool, the Velas of Brazil, you know, I love the story of and the Nogueras and everything. To, to, to be where you are now, I mean, it must fill you. Uh, yeah, I, I just... You know, I'm, I'm sort of living a dream. I've just been, I've just bought my first house, and you know, uh, just coming out into this every day, another, another place, another, another main event, another, another city, another country. Uh, you know, it, me, I always speak with me and my coach and the guys. We, you know, we are just, we were sitting on the beach today, and we're truly, uh, we're blessed. But we've worked hard to be where we are. It's, you know, we haven't got here by chance or by you know a lucky. Streak it. We we proper pull hard hard work and and hard grafting. So you know we deserve to be here. Me and all my team. Of course, yeah. And we saw in your middleweight debut last time out, you were very composed. The game plan that you and Colin worked on obviously went into you know complete focus mode. Can we expect to see a similar type of performance? Uh, do you think yeah. on Saturday? I think we're going to stick to the game plan. I think maybe a, a little bit more of added aggression inside inside the octagon but yeah you know always stick to the game plan and if only i would have done it against masvidal i would i would probably be on the cover of va sports right now so uh but you, know, you can't fight every fight perfection and, and it's not like that the fight game is certainly not like that especially in mma that's why 
it doesn't matter who you're fighting, they could have a big belly or anything, you can never underestimate or overlook any fighter. And I I sort of overlooked Masvidal a bit, you know, because he was a bit tiny at them fucking cars, mate. You're getting petty buns on. <laughs> <laughs> sort of overlooked him because he was a little bit tinier. I beat Stephen Thompson and Stephen Thompson beat him comfortably. So maybe I did, maybe on my part I did. But you know, you live and you learn. I'm only 27 and and, and I'll probably learn much more. I'm, you know, I'm, I haven't even hit anything yet. I, I'm I haven't even started to begin. This is all just fun right now. Of course, yeah. I mean, congratulations as well. You said there about the house. Congratulations about that. Um, you've mentioned Adesanya as well a lot. I know that that's the name you want. That's who you want. Um, Dana White has mentioned potentially bringing about the ultimate fighter. Now, I can imagine you two as coaches, that would be just absolute blockbuster stuff. Is that something that maybe tickles your fancy? Could you see yourself doing that? Yeah, for sure. If 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 him and Costa don't do it, and if him and Costa don't fight, which I can't, I don't know if I see it. Yeah, I'll I'll step in. I, like after this fight, Sati, you know. You know, if all goes well and I win, I'm going to jump straight back. I'm going to have a week off and jump straight back into training and stay ready for September time. And, you know, something could happen. You know, even if the fight doesn't go ahead September and, you know, decide to make it tough and it's me and him, yeah, I, I, I'm all for that. And as I said, it's another experience and it's another, uh, you know, it's sort of a, another medal to everything I've already, you know, achieved and done. So, yeah, I'm up for it. Hey, just one last, me, one last one from me, Darren. Um, Tom Aspinall, your teammate's making his debut uh, in the UFC as well. Uh, as, I mean, British fans have seen just a glimpse of what he's what he's capable of. What do you think the world is in in, in, in store for? Because I mean, he's he's got so much pedigree, hasn't he? Yeah, you know, I train him on a daily basis, and, and and I struggle with him even in my my department where I'm a master at. You know, striking. Uh, he, he's such a fast guy for heavyweight. You'll hear everyone who trains with him all season saying it, and even who sees him fight, he's so fast for heavyweight. He dances around like nothing I've seen. And, uh, you know, I can only speak from what I've seen in the gym and from his preparation. That's all been 100% and perfect and his diet. But it's all down to him now, how he performs. It's it's not down to me or down to Colin. It's all on him. He's got to go out there. He's got to show the world. He's got to perform. He's got to, you know, if he, even if he goes out there and it's a three-round masterclass between both of them and he wins or loses, you know, he's just got to go out there and show the world and show Dana White why he deserves to be here. And, and I truly believe he, he does deserve to be here. So it's all on him now. I, I've got nothing to do with the man anymore. It's, he's gone out there, sadly, for himself, for, him, for his family. And, you know, I, I can't wait to watch him while, while I'm in the back uh, getting warm. Amazing. Thank you very much for your time, Darren. Good luck on Saturday. We will take our next questions from Alistair Bishop with MMA Republic. Okay, mate. Fantastic. Darren, my first question is you, you posted a bit of a transformation picture on social media. So how hard was it uh, coming out of quarantine back into training? It, it actually wasn't so difficult. I was actually, I was quite big because obviously, you know, all we were doing was lazy man. But I, I, as soon as the lockdown was sort of announced from the government. I, I just carried on training once a day, uh, wherever I could and however I could. Uh, so I was training, I was keeping in shape, but also I was eating a lot at, at the same time and, you know, getting quite big and buff. So as soon as, you know, the fight got announced, we just got back in and just sort of trimmed up a bit, cut, cut a lot of st stuff out. But to, with, with regards to being like, Fighting fit, I, I I was quite I was quite okay because I'd stayed in good shape uh, throughout lockdown. You you didn't have any of the five guys menu repeating on you when you got back to training. <laughs> yeah, I, I did have that every day. Like I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, congratulations on the birth of your daughter. You also had a little quarantine surprise there. Um, yeah. How, how how motivating is that for you now? Uh, becoming more of a family man and, and your family's growing. Well, how does that motivate you now? It doesn't. It it never has. It never will. You know. Uh, it why shouldn't you know? Obviously, everything I do now, let's say financial wise and money wise, is all for my family and for my kids to set them up for life. But I was motivated before. You know, uh, my family uh, and my kids, and I'll be motivated. I, you know, I'll always be motivated now. And obviously, there's sometimes you know when you're down and. The, 
images of them come into your head. But it's not to say that I'm not going to sit here cliche and say everything I do now is for them. You know, everything money-wise and financial-wise. And obviously for them to be proud of the father is right. But, you know, uh, I just don't like it when people say, oh, there's extra motivation there. You should have been motivated from the start. You should have been motivated from the start. The minute you you started fighting, you should have had a hundred percent in the gym every single day. I, I always say if you if you're not gonna give a hundred percent, there's no point you going. And there's days like where I I know I won't give a hundred percent, and there's days I don't go because it's pointless me being there wasting my time and wasting my coach's time. You 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 mentioned the heat briefly as you sat down. How hard I'm, I, I was in Abu Dhabi last year for the Khabib card, and I, I know what it's like there. How hard is it to adjust to the heat moving around there at the moment? Uh, it's at the moment it's quite sweaty. It's it's good. It does, you get your little little slight breezes, but yeah, uh, there's, there's it's hot. We went to the beach today and it was it was super hot. I think it was like forty three something like that. So you know it was uh, it was sweaty. It was hard. It was hard to breathe. Does it does it make weight cutting a little bit easier? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you, man. All the best. Thank you. And we will take our next questions from Luis Green with MMA Crazy. Hi, Dan. You mentioned before Dave, your teammate uh, in his UFC, your, your his UFC day. Um, but you've also got your teammate Mike Grundy as well. So, what's it like being um, on the run up to this fight, having them, you know, and um, having them all be sorry, being all together uh, in the run up to this fight? Yeah. yeah. It's like a team, team carbon takeover on Fight Island sort of thing. Uh, you know, there's about seven or eight of us out here, and we're all just chill. We haven't even we haven't even spoken about the fight, uh, not not one bit. We've just trained, we chilled, we went to the beach, we rest, we, we're eating good food. You know, we're sleeping well, but we're getting along, we're having laughs. That's what it's about. You know, we're, we're all here to enjoy this experience, and then Saturday we're going to fight. So, yeah, it's sort of like a little team carbon takeover, and you know. As I said before, with Tom Grundy and Tom are here to do their business, and I'm here to do mine. So, you know, let's hope we're all prepared, and we're all going to show for it on on Saturday. Yeah, nice. And and obviously, Whitaker being a former champion, how important is this matchup for you? And you know, in terms of getting you closer to a shot at that title, it it is important. I want the title. I want the fight out of Zanya, but you know, I, I I'm putting every ounce of energy and 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 spirit and soul everything i've got into this fight because this fight means everything to me like every fight every fight a fight means everything to me so you know i obviously i i think about the belt and i think about other fighting other and i think about fighting welterweight again but you know when i've been in the gym and everything every ounce of energy soul and spirit i've got has gone into beating robert whittaker that, that's all that matters right now and you know, when you think about the fight, how do you imagine it playing out? Me knocking him out. Hopefully, I, I don't. I don't ever imagine him knocking me out. You know, uh, so that's it. I, I imagine myself knocking him out. Hopefully. Okay. Cool. And and you obviously mentioned about you know you want uh, Israel Adesanya next if you do get the win. Um, what is your prediction for Israel taking on Paula Costa next? How do you see that playing out? We'll have to see. I'll have to uh, make the prediction when they both made weight because, you know, up to now, nothing seems concrete. But I think it's a 50 50. I think Adesanya a little bit more because he's a bit more technical. But Costa is a big power, power punching, he's powerful, and he can go the five rounds. So I think it's a 50 50 fight at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we will take our last questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Damon. And, uh, you know, maybe for a fight for a lot of money, you would consider going back to welterweight, but you seem so much healthier and happier at middleweight. Uh, is it weird to think about making these cuts to welterweight? We see Anthony Johnson now. We're like, how did that guy ever make welterweight? Uh, do you feel the same way? You're like, how did I ever do that to myself? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I get dry now when I'm, when I'm like, cutting to middleweight. Not not so dry, but, you know, I can, I can sort of feel my bones and I'm – like my muscles pop out a bit more when I'm like getting below the the ninety uh, kilos. And when I used to make welterweight, you know, when I was getting, you know, uh, when I was around like eighty eight, eighty seven, eighty nine, I was still big. You know, you know, I was 
still buffing that and, and stuff, but now, like I'm, you know, I'm under nineties, under the nineties, close to middleweight, and I can feel all my bones sticking out. So it's just weird that my body's made that much of a change in so quick, quick time. Uh, but I, you know, if it was dead and and the money was right and the, the fight was big enough, I could do one one last hurrah. You know, uh, I know Usman's the champion now, so you know, uh, you, you never know, you never know. You mentioned, you know, Robert Whitaker, former champion like a perfect fight for you to to earn the title shot but we've Robert has gone through some wars you know the fights with you Romero obviously the knockout with Adesanya do you feel like you know testing his chin will be a big part of this fight to see if he can still take that damage because we know that you can only take so many punches in this sport yeah of course you know uh, I I feel like the it's one big thing I've always thought throughout my career that the wars take the toll on on you and whoever you are, you can see them taking the toll. Like, you know, when you look at guys, no disrespect, but when you look at guys like just engaging, I look at Max Holloway now, and sometimes I see glimpses of them like slaying a little bit because of the wars they've been in. And, you know, all respect to the wars, but it ain't a smart choice when you're fighting. You know, you want to sort of look in the direction of Floyd Mayweather, sort of like that. You know, he's 40 plus, whatever he is now, and he's got all his brain cells and that because he hardly got it. So I think. Them wars, yeah, they're good, but they take the toll on you and they do take the toll on your chin. So I think anyone I touch anyway, you know, at middleweight now, I've found, I've found myself, I'm going to hurt with, you know, with that left hand. But, you know, we'll see, we'll see. We, Dana White said, you know, when you moved up, you didn't want an easy fight. You didn't want to test. You wanted to fight into the Gaslam fight, which he was coming off the Adesanya. And now you're getting the former champion, and Robert Whitaker, do you feel like the progression here going into a title shot would just make sense considering where Robert Whitaker is, former champion? It wouldn't make, do you feel like it wouldn't make sense to fight anything else but the champion after this? Just look at my re- resume, you know, look at all my resume from welterweight and now look at my resume, uh, you know, at middleweight. I'm, look at the two guys I'm fighting in, in my debuts at middleweight, you know. Of course, I deserve a title shot. I've never campaigned for it, even when I beat Stephen Thompson in my hometown. I didn't com- campaign for the title shot, but I feel like the stars have aligned now. I beat Gaslam, you know, easily, might I add, and he gave Adesanya the, the most trouble. And now, you know, sadly, I see myself beating Whitaker. You know, I'm beating two of the best guys in middleweights. Where, where do you want me to go? Do you want me to go backwards? So, you know, all these guys calling my name, yeah, you know, we're probably going to meet someday. Um, you know, I'm not avoiding you, and you's not, you's aren't avoiding me. But you know, I'm looking forward. So we'll see what happens Saturday. So you know, I beat Whitaker. I don't want to hear any other name come out of anyone's mouth apart from Israel Adesanya. And last question for me: You mentioned Adesanya. You said that the fight would cost us fifty on either way, but in a would you find yourself, I won't say rooting, but kind of pulling to see Adesanya? Because would it mean more to be Israel Adesanya for the title than being Costa? Or does it matter? I just think it's a bigger fight, me and Adesanya. I just think it's right now, you know, obviously I don't want to talk too much about Adesanya. I've got a big, big person to fight on Saturday. But I think that fight could just be one of, you know, in top te- top 10, top 5 of UFC's biggest ever fights, me and Adesanya. I just, I just think that's... That's a fight that's just got got to happen. But yeah, you know, if Costa wins, then I, I, I'll make a fight with him and I'll campaign for the fight against him. But we'll see. As I said, until I see both them guys weighing in September 9th or 11th, I think it is, you know, I'll believe the fight's happening.